welcome back to Nerd Insider. I'm Ray. Danny. Sid. And today we're going to be talking about this week's episode of The, the Flash. Flash! Called? Son of the Fury? Yeah. <laughs> so this week it was The Flash versus Harry Potter. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> this episode was... I loved it. It was way better than last week's episode, which was unexpected in my opinion because in the trailer, it was just Pied Piper. I was like, that, you know, not really familiar with him. But then they drop a reverse flash bomb on us. I was that like, part. what? That part I see him run, finally saw funny. him run for the first time. I'm still wondering, like, if he's evil or not. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. You have no idea what he's like. Why is he helping Barry if, like, he did something, though, that evil thing where he killed his mother. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Hi, Piper. What'd you guys think of it? Uh, sort of a mediocre character, but just, he was a total smartass. I'm not really, I don't really know a lot about him, but um, it was alright. It was just a little... He played that whole, like, arrogant, Genius. too smart for you kind of guy. But, really like, yeah, he reminded me a lot of... Sheldon Cooper from Big Bang Theory. Yeah, especially like, you know, he was trying to be smarter than Cisco. He was trying to give him that, those uh, hard questions. Kind of smart him kind of thing. Yeah. You know how Sheldon looks up to Stephen Hawking? Hardly Stephen Hawking is Harrison Fox. Oh, because he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. he's in a wheelchair. Oh, you see? Okay. This, yeah. So many similarities. Except, uh, like, he doesn't have the. <laughs> like, hello, my name is Stephen Hawking. Who else can run? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, Stephen Hawking can't. I really like the way they incorporated chess in this episode. Um, yes, it's all about strategy. Like, instead of uh, having Barry just kind of outrun, outspeed his opponents, he kind of had to think a little bit here. So... I'm not really chess fan. I don't know how to play. She's more the expert, <laughs> I guess, because she played it before. I grew up with it. So. Uh -huh. I was more of a Dungeons and Dragons kind of character <laughs> for yeah. Warhammer. So chess was kind of out of my thing. <laughs> that explosion with, with um, when it blew up in Cisco's face, I thought that Cisco was, was extreme. But yeah. I, I thought he was gonna die. Yeah, I thought he, uh, Cisco was gonna bite the dust right yeah. there. The way that the the wall just exploded in front of his face. He got off that. lucky. Yeah. Just got like a, a concussion. concussion. I thought he was at least gonna be in a. I coma. thought his face was like gone already. <laughs> yeah. 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 Really you lucky. were very lucky, Cisco. This episode was really about your mentors, your heroes, like who you look up to. They're not what they are. Yeah. What do you guys think of that theme for this episode? It's funny with Barry, because um, in the comics, Reverse Flash was the one that looked up to Barry. He was the big fan of Barry Allen. In this, in this episode, Barry looked up to Wells, Wells, which is the Reverse Flash. So, so I thought that was kind of ironic, because yeah. they switched roles for this yeah. episode. Yeah. Pretty interesting, though. The fan becomes the mentor. You know, Barry trusts Wells. Way, way too, too much. much. He needs he needs West in his corner for like questioning because whenever Barry's with Wells, his guard is down. I get it, he's your mentor, but at the same time, you should question him a lot yeah, more. Like if because you, if you were in a wheelchair and glass was falling all over everywhere, you, then how, how come yeah. you're not in like no how scratches? How come no scratches? There's nothing no. on your face. Yeah. Like, how is it that you have no mark and your whole roof shattered on you? That does, like... It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It doesn't. So Dr. Wells is a pretty shady character. Barry should know that by now. Especially since he did uh, just admit that the particle accelerator could have... There was something wrong with it. So, and if he was hiding something big like that, and he is also hiding the fact that he is the reverse flash, it's like, what else? Is he not telling them? It's like, did I kill your mother, Barry? That <laughs> uh, too. Did I? Did I? 
No. No. <laughs> it's like, but we don't know that yet, that he killed his mother. It could be someone else, like another... Another reverse flash. flash. I like the part when uh, Dr. Wall says, I have failed this city. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, my <laughs> friend told me I have failed this city. Yeah. Except uh, Dr. Wall is not getting an arrow. In his chest. In his chest but... anytime soon, so... <laughs> so at the end of this episode, we see Wells again back in his little hideout cave Futuristic thing. Lab thing. And he's having the tachyonic device on him. And he's trying to do something with the speed force, I guess. I thought he was he was trying to reestablish his connection or he's trying to restore his connection with the speed force, but we found out in the episode that he's trying to absorb it. Why are you Ooh. trying to absorb it? And why is it that his powers are going in and out because you see it in the episode that like, he cannot control his powers. You see his legs shaking when Piper escapes. Yeah, when Piper escaped, he just he did it for like about like what so, like maybe twenty seconds, and after that yeah. he just fell. He just over. fell yeah. over. So whatever his plan is, Barry is a essential necessity. to it. Yeah, because from the comics, Barry Allen created the Speed Force. Like with, when he was struck by lightning, that was the start of the whole speed force phenomena, you know, like it rippled throughout the through dimensions and time. All the speedsters are connected to Barry. Every time he generates speed force, or every time he runs, he generates the speed force. Maybe that's why Wells wanted Barry to. And just isn't it that um, when Barry dies, there's no yeah. When, if Barry dies, the speed force dies with him. So that's why Wells is. So overprotected yeah. when it comes to Barry. So if Wells is from the point in the future where Barry is gone or when Barry is missing, that means the speed force is also missing. So that's probably why he went back yeah, in time. Yeah, maybe that's why he went back in time because in his timeline, Barry is gone yeah. so there's no speed force. So maybe he went back in time to Barry's time to where the speed force where started speed exists. so he can Take it stop in. everything. So, but it's yeah. like, what's he gonna do with it once he accomplishes yeah, it, or once he gets up to 100%? Because in the episode, you hear 35% and rising. So, what's he gonna do with that after? I, on my, my guess, he's probably gonna go back in time or something like that. But it's like, if he goes, but that's the thing. Well, yeah, but goes, the, yeah, the thing is, but Barry's still there. It's like, there could only be one person to hold the speed force. So I'm like, you can't go back in time. Guess we'll find All out in like the uh, season finale or something. What do you guys think? Write it down in the comments below and tell us what your theories are. So what exactly is the Speed Force for those who don't know? Basically it's um, it's an extra dimensional yeah, energy. Which uh, makes you travel back in time. It's like, it's an ability that all the speed speedsters get, like in um, like all of Barry's abilities. Yeah. Like he can, you vibrate his body to he make can, him yeah. intangible. He can like move super speeds. If you're a speedster, you have the ability to steal someone else's speed too. If you guys didn't know. Exactly. And he can vibrate so fast, his molecules can pass through solid objects. At one point. Uh, in the comics, he vibrated so fast, he switched from one dimension to another. That's how we saw like the first um, Flash, Jay Garrick. So with the right um, frequency, if because like the whole world has a frequency, if he if he vibrates fast enough with the same frequency as the world, then he can travel dimensions between dimensions. Plus, like with the speed force, he has a healing factor. Yeah, he can heal and his metabolism too. Yeah, in the show that side, he has to eat like almost every single time he uses speed. That's that's heaven because you get to eat all the junk in the world and would do anything to you. Only problem is he can never get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> that's the okay. biggest problem that Barry is like was like talking about. Oh, this sucks. I'm like, I've had like maybe twenty beers and, yeah. I'm, and I'm still <laughs> sober as a bird. And another fact about the Speed Force is that it only exists in the DC Universe. So if you're trying to like, let's say, what's it again? Quicksilver, Silver. and the Flash, like if they were in the DC Universe, 
the Flash can pretty much obliterate Quicksilver. It would be like no competition. But if they were in the Marvel Universe, Barry wouldn't have any powers. So yeah. they only exist in these yeah. universes. It's kind of like the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. Like, it doesn't work in this dimension, but it only works in this dimension. In the dimension that was created. Barry, as we said before, Barry created the Speed Force. Um, in, the, in the new Flash comics, the Flash Rebirth, Professor Zoom created uh, another Speed Force called the Negative Speed Force. So basically it's like, Speed Force is like a positive energy, and then the Negative Speed Force is a um, negative energy. So is that where Professor Zoom gets his, his drive? His well, powers? in the comics, yeah, but I don't know if that's, if the show's gonna go towards that direction. Hopefully it does. That would be interesting to see. Yeah. I would love to see that in the episode of uh, Flash. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment. See you guys next time. Bye!